it's pretty steep. We start down there, and that's about what, 200 metres? And we're climbing roughly 500 metres. And then the peaks are around the 1000 metre mark. Got a fair bit to review as well. A sleeping bag, a sleeping mat, some speakers, still testing out a new tent. It's to be nice and dry, nice and sunny. So it's two nights at the Clooney Inn, Loch Clooney, and then one night at a campsite. I don't know whether to do a video at the campsite or not. I could have sworn I picked up my audio equipment, but I did not pick up my audio equipment, so I'm using the microphone on my phone. But I'll show you more when we're up there. So that's us um, finally up here. I think a good 500 metres was sitting at 750, so um, we've only got like the mountain tops. I think the highest one's about 1076. So we've done most of the climbing, so we're getting a quick little break. But I'll show you the general area, I'll spin the camera. Here we go, if we zoom out. So that's the uh, Five Sisters of Kintail here, and across the road, that's Ben Fadder, I believe, and that's the Fussman Row from the Brothers Ridge. So I'm hoping you can hear me. It appears that the audio is not too bad in this phone, even when there's a bit of wind. But this is the Glen Shield 7. 7 Monroe's over 30 kilometres. I was crying there, 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 there. I wasn't crying at the last one, but when I got to the oh boy, what an experience. This guy says sometimes touching the bonnet of the car's better than touching the gear on the summit. Give you an idea of the environment the walks like. Uh, we've got guys here, we got Nick here. We came up from that steep section there and we are camped just the other side of that little hill. But I'll show you guys what the sections are like. There is no room for error here. Rather narrow ridge. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So that one there is the first main row, that one there is the second main row, and that one there is the third main row. It's only uh, 12 kilometres, so they are all, you know, relatively, you know, next to each other. Um, so far the terrain's been fine. It's a narrow ridge, but it's not like a dangerous narrow ridge. I can't see this taking 10 hours, that's what Walk Island says. 10 hours, I reckon we can do it in about 6, but hey, how often did you say, oh we can do it in this amount of time, no bother, and then boom, you've added an extra 3 hours onto what you just said, but um, onwards and upwards to the next one row. Up we go, it's rather steep, solid path now that looks like a truly narrow, terrifying ridge, the first main row, second main row, final main row. Rocky terrain, bit of a pain in the backside coming down that, almost and upwards. Nick's kindly offered to go first, mm -hmm. so I can land on him when I'm falling down. You going that way? Um, There's, there seems to be a path here as well, yeah, that's good. awful. And then boom, first Monroe. That's it coming from this side, absolutely terrifying and tricky. And now we've got a boulder field. There we go. First Monroe bagged. We came from that way, that direction. Uh, those where the trees are, and up. Give you an idea how close the second is about a little. Look, there's no distance between them. As we're sitting at, is it 1027 metres? And we've just done over four kilometres. So, you know, about one third of the trip. But on the way out, where it's easier, uh, I think you're covering a lot of kilometres, so it'll be significantly quicker as usual getting down, but break time. Aye, so fun fact, down there, down there, towards that road, I had a mental breakdown. Boom, off work for three months. Big man at the back that's laughing. Nick, helped me through it. I'm <laughs> Thanks, only Nick. laughing because I'd be crying otherwise. <laughs> And here I am, a thousand metres higher up, in a more hostile environment. What could possibly go wrong? But I've got some backup prescribed benzos for a worst case scenario. 
It's a bouldery bitch. More like the five bitches of Kintail than the five sisters of Kintail. That's us fast approaching the second one. It's been alright. My legs are on form. My back feels a whole lot better. Um, once we got up there, that's six kilometres out of the way. So one more Monroe and uh, six kilometre exit. But I really can't wait to get back to the car. And at that point, I'll show you all the camping equipment. So that's the second Monroe done. And uh, we're, not, we're not looking forward to the third Monroe. Uh, that is a narrow ridge. You can see the path there and it's just a, a dirty drop. Uh, I'm going to need to compose myself here guys, otherwise I'm going to have a second breakdown in this area. That's like the worst place to have a breakdown. You can't call the AA fix that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it. Nah, uh, um, I think uh, for this bit I'm just going to focus on getting up there guys. Uh, but, wish me luck. It is not easy. Oh, okay, I made that a whole lot harder than it actually was. So the final ascent, about 200 metres to go. And it doesn't look as narrow. It does. Look, it's, it's it's steep, but when you look at it from the distance, like the other peaks, once you get closer, there's greater width. So it catches up there. There we go. Final main road done. Uh, you want to just get off this and go straight to the motor? Straight yeah, to the motor. And guys, uh, like uh, roughly down there. I'm very as well zooming in. <laughs> roughly down there is where I had a mental breakdown. I like how in the background they look. <laughs> and here's the views up here. That's a bit of a drop. That's your path back to the car. You've got the Isle of Skye over there. We're camping down there at a campsite, Glenshield campsite. And here we are. Wow. This is uh, probably my favourite Monroe of the Free. There's a lot happening up here. But. But I. I want to, I want to get back to the car, do a run down our setups, straight to the pub for food, and have a wee fire and a good night's cap. So me and Gaz are two happy chappies. Gaz's team won, my United beat City, and my team won. So you beat the Rangers. Sorry. How is you? You a happy man, mate? You ha I'm, a, I'm a happy see you later, mate. <laughs> I'm one happy man. Look at that grin. Look at that, he's a happy man. I've just slurred at the right bloody time. Ah, oh, I'm just good. He's I'm still filming. Ah, oh, that was good. Good, good. Good, good. Good, good. take, my United's won. I'm, I'm all a bit ready because she's a city fan, so. <laughs> she watches your channel, so she's probably <laughs> I don't like city. But uh, we're about four kilometres from the car. We'll be bypassing the fifth sister. We have zero interest in that lady. I just want to get back to the car and some food. Look at them views. And we're still not anywhere near the car. So the car's just like sort of behind that hill there, but we go down the side of it. But the boys are scunnered. I'm scunnered. There's your second and third Monroe. Just can't wait to get to the pub. I don't think we're going to get on it like a car bonnet, but we're going to eat like champions. We slick kings. Aye, so there was like uh, <laughs> six hours of footage missing. It was brutal. The last four kilometres took us about four. Then we went to the pub. I ate about 3,000 calories and about 1,000 grams of protein. I'm feeling it. I'm bloated. I've never been in this much pain. It was harder than this. South Glen Shield Center. I'll do a run down of the set ups in the morning. I'm dying. I had heat stroke. <laughs> it was uh, thoroughly not recommended. I'll catch you all soon. Yeah, the fair one 
Well, it's an idea of what it's like when there's two people in the tent. It's uh, a wee bit narrow, hen, is it? A wee bit narrow. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Aye. So, um, again, we've got the really thick mattresses and the really wide mattresses. You'll need your bog standard mattress. It is, it's tight in here. That's it, she said. <laughs> this is uh, a family friendly channel, man. <laughs> You just shut up. <laughs> Get banned for YouTube. But uh, uh, it's uh, tight in your shop, and uh, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <fun>. uh, uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're dying. Uh, it turns out Gaz is getting food poisoning. <laughs> we're going to upload this and we're laughing in the guy's face. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Gaz is getting He's thrown up like a madman. Yeah, but we're just going to head to bed. And you know what? I'll just extend the video into tomorrow. I'll do a run down and set ups tomorrow. We'll go to the campsite to go. We'll go to Sky. We'll have a good time. So night night. You want to say night night? Do you want to say night night? Oh my God! Is that Gaz? No, it's it's for my YouTube. It's for the video. Oh, right. uh, no, night night. <laughs> <laughs> night night. <laughs> night night. Night man, so it's just after it raining. And uh, the rain appeared out in over, so we might somehow we have some heavy rain for the next couple of hours to put us to sleep, eh, hey, hen? So what a night that was last night. Heavy rain just came in from nowhere. And uh, yeah, lasted for a good couple of hours. Wind picked up as well. But poor guys, poor guys didn't uh, take too well. He ended up having to go home. So I hope the big man's alright. I'm gonna phone him, phone his parents shortly. See how he's getting on. But still three of us for the weekend. Uh, we're going to see how the troops got on um, and then we're going to head off to Sky, get some supplies and then we're going to stay at a campsite overnight. Aye, so I'm back out in the Robins Pioneer and bog standard tunnel tent, three poles, biggest one in the middle, huge vestibule. Again, apparently this can handle wind speeds up to a 180 kilometers an hour. So it's got the best guy out points with the, the ropes uh, interconnect. And you've got a guy out point at either end. Ventilation there, ventilation at the other end, and a two way zip. Good porch, sorry, vestibule, sorry, vestibule. And then um, the last two nights, I've had the Aero Go Go and Kiza have kindly sent me a new summer sleeping bag to try and it's significantly better than the Unigear one that I tried out. I was nice and toasty. It's been opened the entire trip. It's been opened the entire trip. Lisa, it's a Unigear mat, but, or a Jemmy, I think it's called. She's, you, you slept on both, but it's hard to tell because the ground's been une, uneven. But I think you've preferred this one you're on so far. Uh -huh. Aye. This one appears to be a little thicker, uh, but, both do a similar job. Uh, you can't get both in the tent, but I've brought the light tour one, so we'll keep the Unigear one for Lisa to test out even more now that I've thoroughly tested that bad boy out. Lisa had the Keezer sleeping bag weighted down to minus 22 and it's taken her a while to get warm, but this poor lady uh, can't regulate her body temperature for shit. But overall, Lisa, you've been fine. Aye, it's been class. It's oh, been class. 
Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Let's go and see how Nick got on. Nick's showing off. And the nature height cloud up too. An underrated wee tent. Underrated wee tent. Let's have a little look inside. Come have a look, I'm half packed up. Half packed up. Uh, I'm trying to get in, it's a, yeah, the zit's broke, the zit's broke. World's smallest vestibule, that's the most disappointing thing. But like that. Pretty spacious inside. Was it a valve problem you had with this? Valve problem, yeah. yeah I've this up it's, it's usually the big one that's, uh, it, you one? press down hard on that one. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've had it the same in my Aero Go Go mattress, you need to press down hard on that. And that listens randomly, so you just need to tighten it a little. I find this thing's way comfier if you don't inflate it fully. If you inflate it, you know, maybe like 80%, because then you kind of sink into it like, you know, like a... It can be quite hard when fully blown up. Yeah, yeah, so... A lot of people do that, they, don't, that. they only inflate it between 50 and 80. Mm -hmm. uh, but I need to check up on the science and that, but David's the same, he doesn't fully inflate no, his mat. A lot of people don't, don't fully inflate. I don't know if Gaz fully inflates his mats. I don't know, we should ask him, we should we? ask him. <laughs> we'll give him a phone call shortly. <laughs> the yeah. OEX Fathom EV400. Oh yeah, yeah, this is only good for summer, right? It's advertised as four seasons, but you would not take this out in winter. I've been out, I've been out in like two degrees, it's too cold. Five degrees, it's too cold. 12 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> That's about right, aye. Were you in the bag or was it a blanket? Oh, no, I was just, I had it unzipped. I, had, I, 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 I was I, in I, a blanket, really thin one, and I was yeah. fine. Aye. I, mean, I had two people, I had Lisa in the tent, I had her heat just oh, well, radiating it, I mean, off uh, me. <laughs> Everyone needs a Lisa to heat their tent up. <laughs> how are you finding the tent so far? I think it's a cosy one person tent. I think it's tent. a really good tent. I like, I like how it's, light it is. I mean, when I thought we were going to be camping up, up at 600 metres, uh, I didn't really want to carry a heavy tent like the Rookin, like I normally take. Um, this, this one weighs way less, way less. More compact. More compact. This is a great summer tent as well because the ventilation is, oh, aye. is great. I've had out in winter, yeah. as long as you've got the right stuff it's fine, but it, it gives off a nice ambient feeling because of how white it is as well. I like do, you, do you get colour psychology? Yeah, no, aye. I understand that. I, li I like a white yeah. tent, uh, a white and grey tent gives off good ambience. Colder, but a good, a good, really good day, uh, tranquil yeah. feeling. But I like it. Yeah, that's good, a good tent. Good man, thank you. Mm -hmm. I know what you think about the nature cloud up too. I love it. Just a really tiny vestibule. So that's us. That's us. Our second destination, and uh, we're at the Glenshield campsite. So I'll show you guys around. And the surrounding environment. Five sisters of Kintail up there. Absolutely brutal. The most difficult experience of my life so far. So here we are, the Glenshield campsite. £14 a night uh, for each tent, well, per person. Not too bad, not too shabby. And as you can see, still raining. And we're expecting a lot of rainfall tonight, so could get tasty, could get tasty. Over there, you've got a little shed, protects you from the elements. you got some benches. And we are allowed to bring the fire pit over there. Obviously not too close to the wood, but I'll have to generate some light and maybe a bit of smoke to keep the midges at bay. A pair of scumbags over there. Yeah. Family friendly, Lisa, family friendly. Next got the cloud up. We've got the robins. More of this later. As you can see, plenty of spots to pitch your tent. And then you've got your caravan section with the electrical hookups. Well, I believe they've got, yeah, they've got electrical hookups. Over there, they've got the ladies, the gentlemen's, and the kitchen. I've also got some good news. Uh, Gaz is feeling better. And I'm just about to give him a little phone call. Beautiful little campsite. Stunning views. So there you have the kitchen. The ladies' toilet. I'm not going in there, because that's how you get put on a register. Yeah, check out the kitchen. There we go. Ooh, Get a little microwave. Get two sinks. And hot water. We shall be capitalising on that bad boy later on. Wait till you see what we've got for tea. Just making sure no one's in. And here you've got the toilets. Two toilets and uh, the showers. Give you an idea how powerful the showers just in case anyone's interested. Might be. Come to this little campsite. Good strength. I like it. Sadly, it's not a hose, but good pressure. Solid pressure. And you close up. 
Got a little wedge. And check out that soap. Whiskey and honey. We hate. It's by the lights you need to switch off to turn the lights on. So, yeah, awkward. Something a little bit different this week. Don't think I've never done a campsite video. So that's cute, that's cute. But let's go and check the setup for tonight. Again, I've got the Robins with me. It's a little bit different today. Now, yesterday, I had um, two rather large mattresses in the bedroom space. I've got a large mattress and a normal sized mattress. And it fits in a whole lot better. So this is a light to your sleeping mat. I've had this down to cold temperatures, you know, minus five, nice and warm. Super comfortable. I love this honeycomb-esque design. Very underrated mat, very underrated. I would highly recommend it. And again, I tried this uh, Keezer sleeping bag out. I've been trying a lot of Keezer sleeping bags out recently. And uh, this is a summer sleeping bag. It's very thin, but I used it as a blanket yesterday. And that was nice and warm, I think. Temperatures get down to where we were, about 10 Celsius. So it does, it, it clearly does the job. This is the other Keezer sleeping bag. This, this is the one that Lisa's using. And supposedly this goes down to minus 22. I don't know how to feel about that. Now this one, you don't see any down leak. Or bleed, I like saying bleeding, but look at the, look at it down here. This all comes from this big bag. The one that goes down to minus 22, so, mm, not too happy. And Lisa's got the, I think it's origami, it's pronounced, oh good god, it's at the other end of the tent. Uh, Unigear gave me that, Lisa loves it, Lisa loves this sleeping pad, I've tried it, I find it to be comfortable, but it's a summer mat, but I think it's origami, I'll certainly pop the specifications of the mat on this little video, and here we have the vestibule, oh Monty! Why would you do that? And it's a very spacious one for two people. And what's Nick got with him? The Nature Hike Cloud Peak. See when this tent's up, pegged out, guyed out. See if you put this end into the wind. It's, it handles the wind very well. Got some ventilation there. Uh, it's one pole, but it splits into two at the bottom and at the top as well. Very lightweight and very compact. It's a tent that I like, but again, guys, look at the state of this vestibule. You know, that is a wee vestibule. A wee vestibule. Uh, there's his seat and his door's purely mesh. So it's a summer tent, solid ventilation. Really like this tent, I miss my tent, I miss my cloud up. Next got one from the Aerogo Go mattress, the one I had last night. Uh, just need to ensure that's tightened. And one at the bottom's tightened as well. But apart from that, it's a thick mattress, takes up a lot of width in the tent, but it's super comfortable. They say it's got an R value of five, but that's absolute nonsense. I've had it down to freezing a few times and it's been like lying on a block of ice. Nick with his. He sat it around freezing as well, and he said he was cool too. He's got his U um, OEX Fathom as well. Marketed as a four season bag. Nick wouldn't recommend it. We would recommend that you, if you're taking it out, just ensure nighttime temperatures are above five Celsius. But yeah, we made a little tent, cozy little two person tent, but very cozy two person tent. Good tent for you and a dog, but another two human beings asking for trouble. It is rather cute in there. Plenty of space. Plenty of space. You even got a couple of mirrors over there. It's time for tea, and guess what I'm having? That's the rain rolling in. Rather handy. We've got bins as well. It's time to capitalise on the kitchen while the rain's on. On this side, we've got a chicken madras with pillow rice. And here we have chicken tikka with lentil rice. Only about, that's 388 calories, that's 500, so less than 900 calories between them. A curry on the campsite. Uh, uh, uh.
What do what on earth do these things mean? Just put it here and hope for the best. For the rain has arrived. Aye, it's been an interesting little day. We got up about midday, pitched the tent up here, went to Sky, got some cracking food out of a little cafe in Broadford, came back, sat in the shed, made some friends, now we're getting a little drink and some food. Well, this place is absolutely gorgeous. I want to do more campsites. Nick's just coming. Nick is getting soaked. The midges, the midges are bad here. In fact, no, you liar, Marty. There's a lot of midges, not swabs of them. I don't know if you can see these guys up here. But they've not been bothering me. I put a smidge on. Feeding to Isla, the smidge is very successful, very useful, very effective. Or eating time's over for them. Eating time's normally, you know, six o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the evening. But no, nah, no. Nah. Can you see? No, you can see. There's Nick coming with his microwavable meal. Nick, I, I don't know how to work the microwave, mate. It's got like multiple settings. I mean, you want to have a look and hope for the best. Let's right. get it out. Two pounds per one. There's uh, no one else in here. I've just, I've just put it on this little setting and hoped for the best. This one. What does that mean? 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 I would, so say, I would, say, that, I would say that's low setting. Medium, high, and very high. But that's defrost. When you move them around, it says death, 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 as in defrost. Death. D E F, as in defrost. Or death. Not as in death, as in death. death. Oh, oh no! Oh my god, run! What did I want to do? This is an unwanted, is it? Can, can camping death, camp. I'm not familiar with no, 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 no. Camping with a microwave, I mean. Yeah. We used to... Should have brought more microwave. Kind of gas stoves and stuff. Wait, wait, you having for tea? Uh, Chicken joke. It's high in salt, that's what I like. Chilled. Char char girl chicken. Yeah. In a... Aromatic... Jaffret... Jaffretzi sauce. And yeah. tomatoes, onion and red peppers. That's that, that's it. Guaranteed delicious. Guaranteed delicious. <laughs> it's cold. Nick's under... In control. Where you go, Nick? You wait, wait, wait. Make my dinner. Right. It needs to be heated for 11 it's minutes. Cold, right? Exactly, but he's got it on the, 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 the one steam function, right? Two steam. little steams, three steams, four steams, right? And he picks that one because he thinks that somehow that's the so best. So what thing steam does it go on? Well, it needs to go on, surely. Well, well, wait, P100? Wait. What does P100 mean? What does P80 mean? What does G mean? What does G mean? Not defrost. Right. I think I think that is the highest setting. I think that's power eighty percent. But that's power one hundred. Right, yeah, power ten percent. Right, right. I figured it out. Power ten percent. Power thirty. Power fifty. Eighty. A hundred. So a hundred. So we want a hundred. Yeah. For eleven minutes. Wait, see, if you, see, see if you burn my dinner. I'm eating yours. Right. Well, that's why I've got two dinners. So. Oh. Like eleven it. minutes, mate. The pressure's on you. Eleven. Turns out I've missed red. <laughs> It's not put in for five minutes, stand for two, then four and a half, stand for two. It's separate instructions, so my dinner's on fire. Mm -hmm. Sorry, man. Sorry, man. What I don't like about this tent is the rain trickles down here. Mm. Some rain hitting off the tent footage. Oh, there's a bit of rain on the camera. I suppose it truly reflects the conditions that we are in. Ready for some food. How yummy does that look? Nick, you're a man of sound science. What's your opinions on the Tron Smart? Martun C2? Well, I would say <clears throat> where we are right now, which is in a campsite, right, and the time 
It's 11 o'clock. So it's after 10 o'clock. That's quiet hours. So you can't be making too much noise. A speaker like this is really good, from, from my experience, in a small group around the table. It's got this 360 degree audio, so it kind of sounds the same no matter where you're sitting. Whereas when you've got normal speakers, you've got the kind of, you know, the front of the speaker where it's projecting most of the vocals and stuff, and then you've got the bass port at the back and it's projecting the bass and stuff like that. So it's quite directional. So you don't really want it in, in the middle of a table, it, it, it sounds kind of rubbish because you know, if you're sitting to one side of the table, you get a lot of the vocals, if you're sitting to the, the other side, you're getting a lot of bass, you know. Whereas this thing, you, you stand it upright and it's like. It just sounds the same no matter where you're sitting. It also sounds quite good on low volume, which I really like. Uh, See, so when it's quiet hours like right now, you know, and it's dark and people are sleeping, you know, <laughs> then it's good because you can huddle around it and get good sound. Um, I think where it falls down is when you turn up the volume, you don't really have that substance. You don't have that bass, you know, it kind of lacks in definition, so if you're looking for a party speaker, this isn't really a party speaker, you know. I mean, maybe maybe if we could turn it up, it might be okay, but I think beyond a certain point, you're going to lack, lack the bass and the volume, but it is really good for a small group, you know, around a table like right, like right now, so. And it's got this cool light feature, which, you know, which is good. So anyway, in conclusion, I think <laughs> it's a good speaker, but I wouldn't have a party with it. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, mate. Thank you. So a brilliant night so far. We just sat under this little shed. It's been heavy rain for like the past two hours. Sat and listened to some music. Had a little fire on the go. We're allowed a little fire here for us for as long as it's outside the shed. As you can probably see from previous clips, we've got some booze on the go as well. But the wardens on this little campsite, the Glen Shield campsite, have been absolutely fantastic. Very reasonable. We've met some cracking people with uh, similar, you know, interests, hiking and music. Uh, yeah, it's an absolute banger, it's just the same. Just a shame Gaz isn't here. But it's about half past eleven. I'm going to finish the last of the booze. And then head to bed and get more footage. Hopefully. Hopefully the rain apparently the rain's to stay on to about four o'clock in the morning. Some more footage of the rain hitting off the tent. That's it, Lisa. Nearly in, mate. Nearly in. So as you can see, we've got a, a bigger mat here and a bog standard mat and it fits in perfectly. So you get one big mat, one wee mat and two human beings. Yes. Yes. There we go. No, oh, oh, my horn's there. Uh, and I need to bleep that out. Cheers, mate. <laughs> That, that's, us in, that's us in bed now. Heavy rain, yes. It's gonna get me hits. Um, did you have a good night, mate? Did you have a oh, good night, mate? Gaz. Gaz? Is Not, that Gaz? Why would. It's me. Oh. It's a YouTube video here. Yeah. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. I get it, no? We are, we're going to bed, you so we'll catch you all in the morning. Night. Take care. See you in the morning. Night, night, night. <laughs>